Greetings. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak to all of you taking part in one of the most worthwhile programs I know, Citizens for America. When you think back to 1980, it's easy to remember the mess our country was in, the soaring inflation, the weakened defenses, the loss of respect for our nation abroad, and the excuses about a malaise infecting America. When we woke every morning, we wondered what new humiliation our country had suffered abroad or what bad economic news we'd hear about next. I remember the ache we all felt in our hearts. We knew we couldn't continue on the road we were on, and we were determined to change course and get America back on our feet. Well, we've journeyed far in the past three and a half years, but it wouldn't have happened without support, time and energy, and without the work of organizations like Citizens for America. CFA is growing by leaps and bounds, and that comes as no surprise. Good ideas always have a way of catching on. And when good people are behind good ideas, they're bound to catch on. Jack Hume, your founder, has been in the forefront on many worthwhile projects. CFA's forward-looking program is just what one would expect from Jack. And it certainly doesn't hurt to have the organizational genius of Lou Lehrman. Lou has taken Jack's vision and turned CFA into an important part of the American scene. And then there's Holmes Tuttle. He's had a hand in launching so many good projects. He's even helped start a few political careers. And now together, we're putting America back in the hands of the people. Our critics said it couldn't be done. Well, those critics were wrong on inflation, wrong on unemployment, wrong on the recovery, and wrong on our national security. And today, once again, the world knows America will stand up for freedom, democracy, and peace with human dignity. For too long, the enemies of our way of life have been permitted almost by default to dominate the struggle of ideas. Kremlin leaders have always placed a major emphasis on this aspect of their relations with the West. Little wonder they've been upset that some no longer permit them to go unchallenged. Four years ago, we heard that our country was in decline, that we were suffering a crisis of will. Well, nobody's saying that anymore. Rather than being seen as too weak and uncertain, some now suggest we're too forceful. Well, forgive me, but they're mistaken. Today, the cause of freedom is better off, and the likelihood of peace is far closer than in many years. Maybe those complaining about the state of international relations haven't noticed that this administration has not given up a single inch of territory to communist domination. No one, especially members of this administration, wants war. What we're proving is that peace through strength is more than a slogan, it's a reality. In the long run, our strength of purpose, our candor about our adversaries, and our commitment to rebuild America's defensive capabilities will bring better relations with the Soviets and more security for all free peoples of the world. And believe me, Citizens for America is playing an important role. What you do to create the right political climate in this country will mean much to whether or not America is successful in her great mission. I appreciate very much all CFA has done in support of the liberation of Grenada and also what you've done to highlight the threat we face in Central America. On the home front, you've been a leading advocate of enterprise zones and of the basic principles underlying our economic renewal program. So thanks to you, CFA, for all you've done. Whenever you get the chance, tell the people that America is going forward, but we're not satisfied with that. We're going to see to it that America continues to go upward and onward. And with your help, we will. God bless you all. My fellow Americans, there are many serious things that will occupy our attention in the coming weeks and in the fall. But today, I find my thoughts turning away from politics to something equally important, but happy too. Eleven weeks ago, I greeted the Olympic torch when it was carried to the White House by a young man a fine young athlete who had carried it high for almost a mile. Today, the torch arrives in Los Angeles, and I'm thinking of what a journey it knew and what a country it traveled through. The journey started in the east, in Manhattan, in front of the United Nations. From there, it arced south and west and passed from person to person in a marvelous relay. It was carried by former Olympians and handicapped kids, by elderly women and young athletes bright with the speed of youth. They held the torch high, and passed the flame on to one another. They took it up hills and through lonely towns in the darkness, along gray highways at twilight and through bright towns at noon. They carried it past the malls and the airports, through the suburbs and cities. 
up the hills of steel towns and along the flat roots of America's heartland. They carried it through the gathering heat of the West in early summer, and they took it to Los Angeles, where today the torch lights the Olympic flame and the games begin. Everywhere the torch went, people came out of their homes and poured into the streets to cheer and wave the flag and urge the runners on. This outpouring reflected, I think, the new patriotism that has swept our land. So much of that new spirit involves our young people. It seemed to me for some time now that there's a spirit of renewal among the young. It's as if they understand the future is great and huge and waiting for them. They seem to know once again that America is worth loving, worth caring about. They seem to take a quiet pride in all this nation was and is. They show a happiness with our country that's wonderful to see. I think we can hear and discern in their music these days, certainly more than in the past, an optimism and a feeling of affection for our nation. And there are the young people who will represent America in the games themselves. They too show a marvelous spirit. They represent our country not in some kind of narrow nationalist sense, but in a wider sense. They reflect the things we taught them about human conduct and human effort, all the good things they learned on the playing fields and at the gym, on the city streets and in the playgrounds of America. In those places, they learned that the pursuit of excellence is a fine thing in and of itself, and the elusive pursuit of perfection is one of the things that makes man human. They learned that you play by the rules with a sense of fairness and generosity, that you don't cheat, and that you take both victory and defeat with the same kind of grace and dignity. Our young athletes deserve great credit. They were born with great gifts. God blessed them with the physical talent that made it possible for them to compete in sports. But after that, after the original gift, after that it was all effort. To become champions, they had to work hard with discipline and desire and no small amount of tenacity. What they are and what they've done gives us a lift. It's always inspiring when we see young men and women try to resist gravity, to fight fatigue, to, in the words of the first astronauts, push out the edge of the envelope, push out of the things that hold us down, and push on to new possibilities, new records. Today it begins, and our athletes are ready. They'll stand there over the next few days. They'll poise themselves on the blocks, stand at the edge of the diving board, or stand with their toes on the line and wait for the shot to go, and they'll know they're not alone. They'll hear the roar of the crowds, the great substantial cheer of the crowds, and who knows, if they listen close, maybe they'll hear the sound of Jesse Owen cheering, Babe Didrikson, Jim Thorpe. Maybe they'll hear the cheers of all the young American athletes who once stood on the blocks waiting for the race to begin. Our young people are running for their country, running for greatness, for achievement, for that moving thing in man that makes him push on to the impossible. The torch is passed, the games begin. The 23rd Olympiad of the modern era commences. And as it does, just for a moment, we think of the words of the Psalms. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Until next week, thanks for listening. God bless you.